Um, the Voting Rights Act was another big decision. Uh, the court, uh, by a five to four vote, struck down uh, the part of the Voting Rights Act that requires certain states to get pre-clearance before they can change their voting arrangements. You dissented in that case. Uh, tell me you know, what your grounds for dissent was and why the majority struck this, this act down. Um, well, the, 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 the grounds for dissent were simply that uh, this is an area where congressional power is at its apex. The 15th Amendment, which is the amendment that protects voting rights, gives uh, Congress the power to enforce that amendment. Congress had uh, decided to do so by a reauthorization of the Voting, Ra voting Rights Act, one of many reauthorizations that had happened in, in 1965 and uh, the original Voting Rights Act in 1965, and the dissenters thought that there was no reason to question that congressional judgment. Now, the majority had a different view. The majority thought uh, that, uh, I, th I think, based their view on, t on two principles, one which was a, 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 a equal sovereignty for states, the idea that uh, Mississippi would be treated differently from New York, and, uh, and a sense that uh, there needed to be a, a, a more than a rational, more than just any old justification for doing that, that, that there needed to be some kind of heightened showing, and a sense that the formula that Congress had continued to use was just out of date, that it was the old formula from 1965. And I think that the dissenters said in response to that, uh, number one, we don't understand where this equal sovereign idea comes from. It doesn't seem to be in the Constitution. And, uh, and, and number two, uh, this formula, although old and although based on, um, uh, you know, things that, you know, what, what states were doing in 1965, that Congress had looked at it again and had thought that it was a really pretty good proxy for which states needed to have continued sort of extra scrutiny for voting. And so, you know, I voted with the dissent on that one and uh, was disappointed. Well, on that, we're, we're out of time, but the, the last question then is the obvious one. You were disappointed in that case. Obviously, there are other cases this term where you were in the, in the majority and were, must have been deeply gratifying. You've been on the court for several years. How optimistic are you about this court, the Supreme Court's ability in the future to uphold ideals of liberty and democracy and equality? Well, I'm generally an optimist. And, you know, look, you can't do this job without, you know, you win some, you lose some. And, uh, and, and some days you go home deflated and some days you go home thrilled. And uh, I'm sure every single one of us on the court thinks that. Uh, and then you just come back and, and, uh, and try to do the job the best you can the next day. Try to read the law the best you can. Try to decide the cases the best you can. And, uh, and I believe in, in the power of reason, and I believe in the power of persuasion. So, uh, so that makes me an optimist. The country is lucky to have you. Thank you, Justice Kagan.